Welcome everyone to the um, first meeting of the Human Resources uh, Joint Committee. Um, I'd like to go ahead and open the meeting and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I move to open the meeting. Oh. Second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. 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 Let's start. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so I guess the first thing we'll look at is first thing on the agenda, tasking, and we'll let you take over where you think we should start. Well, we go around the table and introduce you. Oh, sure. You want to do that? Kevin Barry. Don Kerr. Brian Kimbis. Amy Cohen. Randall Everett. Cool. And so I, I will move at this point that uh, Randall, Amy, Don, Brian, and myself um, be appointed representatives of the Human Resources Joint Committee. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't have to abstain, do I, for voting for myself? <laughs> it's been done before. <laughs> um, do we have someone taking the minutes of the meetings, or what are we going to do about I'll that? I'll take the first I'll oh. take it. Right. Thank you. Oh, okay. So I guess the first thing we're going to look at is what our tasks are. Do you think I should uh, maybe review the sure. direction of yep. the Human Resources Committee? So the purpose of the Human Resources Committee, as outlined so far, is to review the provisions of all union contracts and recommend common contractual language where needed that addresses all terms and conditions of employment and benefits. And we will review all terms and conditions of non-union employees for both town and village, including benefit packages, and recommend a consolidated plan for such. Um, something I was thinking about uh, today is I know they're mapped out um, in the consolidated study. Um, we're probably going to need copies of that. And do we think that those outlines are good for our purposes? Um, I think they're a good starting point for yeah. our purposes. So for the next meeting, we'll photocopy the positions. Are you talking about the position descriptions for? The town and the village? Or? Well, the organizational structure right. is really what I'm thinking about. That shows the overlap and the, uh, the non overlap, correct? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the flow chart. I'll make a note of that. I will tell you, Brian, I did a little research on the town's part, and essentially we have a union contract with the United Public Service Employees Union. Um, which our building inspector is um, is the liaison for. Uh, we also have local union 445, International Brotherhood of Teamsters. The Teamsters. Chauffeurs. Warehouse. Sorry, the, the Teamsters. What did you say? That? Chauffeurs. Warehouse men, I guess, and women, and Helpers of America. So that's two union contracts plus. I think Randall will be able to chime in. I know that we have a series of police contracts with our police department, um, uh, and there are, then there are separate contracts with the dispatchers, the um, the uh, the lieutenants, um, chief. the chief, and then the regular um, force itself. Um, so I, w I believe there are four or five separate contracts. Correct. Correct, and I don't know whether or not the, the I think the police and the ch and the lieutenant are not union, but they're right. where it's, it's between the town and the two individuals. Correct. So they're not governed by any union kind of thing, although I presume they have representation somewhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somehow, uh, but it's it's not like the, the police officers and the dispatchers. Right. So th those are the layers that I was able to discover in terms of what the town has on the books right now. It's also my understanding that all of those contracts are up for negotiation at this point as well. As a matter of fact, they're overdue the, for the most part, except, right, the, except the chief and the lieutenant. Yeah, yeah. And the lieutenant. Yes, um, How many years generally do these contracts run for? Well, I haven't reviewed each contract, but uh, each contract years? is different in terms of its term. Um, I was looking through the files today. The last dispatcher um, contract that I looked at was from 2007. I think that's expired. Okay. 
So they're all expired, they're all expired waiting for renegotiation at this point. Uh, the village uh, deals with the CSEA, that is our sole uh, union, and we're up for renegotiations with them this okay. year. What okay. is the CSEA? Um, civil Service Employment. Be the acronym, but yeah, association maybe. Yeah. Let me uh, um, let me throw out two two ends of a of a spectrum with regard to uh, the four different four or five different contracts related to uh, to law enforcement, police. On one end of the, end of the spectrum, my first in inclination was well, there's still going to be a police department. So from a consolidation standpoint. We probably don't have to look at that too much. That's one end of the spectrum. I don't embrace either end. Other end of the spectrum is making recommendations for, with regard to law enforcement, might be a, a real area of savings. Now, I don't know. I don't know which is. I'm not. I don't embrace either. What 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 is the what is the purview of this of this effort? I guess I'm trying to figure out if we should be looking at. Let's ignore the police department because we're going to have a police department no matter what, or. Is there, is there some ways that we can make recommendations? And this might be stepping on the police commission's toes or the town board's toes. And I, I, I just don't know the, the answer. I'm just trying to, well, I do, as I, I look at police, how do I, how do I, yeah, how do I think I, about I this? Do know that, I do know that the, the, the town does the negotiation with the police department, but I think one of the ways that we could look at it, if we are thinking and talking about consolidation, one of the things that we might need to think about is marrying benefits versus village versus t versus town. I don't know if they differ. So in, in that regard, I think we would need to, to look at, you know, how the town and village benefits differ uh, for their employees with union contracts. I don't know if there is the, the, the difference, but that's one of the things that, that we could look at. I do know that, um, you know, the, the, the Chief and Lieutenant's contracts, I think, I don't know, Kevin, were they extended for a year or, or two years? For, I, yeah, think I don't, one? I, I think the Chief's was a year. I'm and pretty sure it was a year because the last contract was a year. Okay. But so I'm not sure about Lieutenant's year. contract. Yeah, I think they were probably both right. a year. Right. Yeah. I'm but those, sure are, right. those are two, that, that's a separate kind of marriage that the town has with the Chief and the Lieutenant. Right. Uh, so they're, they're, you know, I would presume you're the lawyer. Or I guess at some point if you decide you want to change the way things are, that's something that... I think, Don, your question is a good question because uh, there is no overlap. We have one police yeah, force. Yeah, so probably we're not going to be making too many recommendations there. Otherwise, we might be st stepping on other toes. Yeah, we are a subcommittee on human resources. Right. I understand right. that. We might be <laughs> stepping on some toes. Not, okay. So in terms of looking at that, we would take a look at what sort of benefits these groups of employees make compared to yeah, what village employees be, make. Yeah, and I think and if there's a disparity, be, that would be where we could weigh in. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be interesting, too, to compare the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so what I've done is I've gotten a list from the town of the current employee roster, and we're going to talk about how how we're going to have to approach this because it's you know it's kind of confidential in, in some sense, um, but it shows the different health programs right. that are offered, and there are two primary health programs offered: NYSHIP and NYSHIP with the police, especially NYSHIP right. and an MVP. Right, and um, you you'll see that. Um, I think there's there's a lot that we can do here in terms of the insurance uh, cost to uh, I think drive savings going forward. There, there are a lot of interesting new programs that are offered by health insurance providers, which allow you to establish a uh, health savings account and then you fund a portion of it out of that that lowers your monthly premium and whatever's left over in that fund at the end of the year could end up coming back to the town or village. I'm just saying there's, for, for example, a family, a family um, uh, MVP cost is currently $1,923 a month right. for MVP. Okay. For a family yeah. plan? For a family plan. That's and what? NYSHIP is cheaper. NYSHIP is a little bit cheaper. Uh, it's about $1,562. So uh, 
Uh, I think there's quite a bit of cost savings to be driven here, especially if we're more creative with how we package the, the, the uh, health coverage going forward. I know that we have to do that in, in, in private business. We have to right. constantly negotiate every year to save as much as we possibly can. You know, it, it, it is a possibility if we got everybody into the same program um, and we were just, you know, being supplied by, by one provider, that there may be better savings um, by giving one provider bigger business, um, cutting the other one out. And I don't know how many people you have on your roster, Kevin, but, um, you know, if you had 100 employees that were covered, it may be cheaper than doing 40 one way and 60 another way. The, the, the one thing I can tell you about that is the reason why we have two different forms of coverage is that there are a lot of police that historically have felt that the one program, which is the NYSHIP program, is better for them because it's portable. They can move to Florida and not have to worry about the coverage, whereas historically MVP would only insure you within a certain region. They wouldn't insure you throughout the United States. Even though that's starting to change, that's the reason why most police officers keep the NYSHIP coverage rather than switching to MVP. And one of the things that I could add to that is that I believe a lot of the officers believe that the family plan on MVP is better than it is on NYSHIP. And one of the things that we found in going over the budget is that the town had been paying the full coverage for people who were on the family plan under MVP when the contract specifically stated that we had to offer a plan that was equal to right. but cost no more. Mm -hmm. And what we were doing is the town for I don't know how long they Too had long. been doing it, they had been paying instead of making the officers pay the difference between NYSHIP and MVP. And I believe that has stopped now. I think a lot of those folks got word that Ooh, found that out stopped right. earlier this year right. when we discovered that. Yeah. Uh, there was supposed to be a reimbursement payment made, so that's, that's I believe that's been right. Has it? Okay. But you're right, Amy. It would be nice to have one provider, so perhaps when we negotiate with that provider in the future, we've got to make sure they're going to have the coverage that's going to be suitable for everybody. Now, NYSHIP is the state plan, right? It's the New yeah, York right. State. Um, so I have the list of town employees, the current town employees, and um, maybe Brian, you can get the list. Well, actually, I do have the list of the village employees, but I don't see. This is what we got from the village, Brian. Just take a peek. Doesn't have the the particular health plans in there. No, but I can get a hold of that. And while we're talking about costs and benefits, I don't know whether or not it is something that is, is on the radar for the group, but as we talk about, you know, the, the health savings plans for health benefits, um, is it in our interest to perhaps look at ways to reduce town slash village combined retirement costs as a, as a function of possible contribution by employees into their plan so that it is not totally footed by the town and the village because again that is something that businesses do and if we are you we talking did. health insurance after retirement no i'm i'm talking about just retirement in in general i believe the 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 full cost of retirement benefit is 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 that not Born by the, the town and village as part of the agreements, and the employee doesn't contribute to that at all. Is it, am I okay, right have, or wrong? We have currently the town has 30 retirees receiving medical benefits mm -hmm. and 21 receiving dental benefits. So I think you're right. Um, we have to develop a policy going forward that uh, makes sense in terms of how these things are funded. Um, are you going to fund it at a flat rate at the time of retirement? And then that's your contribution to the, the insurance going forward? Because, uh, as you know, health insurance premiums grow pretty dramatically, and the, the town obviously can't afford to, to be captive to insurance companies yeah. 
I mean, they can almost predict how much they're going to make each year just from the right. the captive uh, town and, and school employees. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I'm curious that you mentioned dental insurance, and I'm I just had no idea that we were offering dental insurance to our employees. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the employees have dental insurance. Yeah. That's Any part of the package. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's a counterpoint to your your last point, though. If if there's a cap put on retirees contribution or contribution by the town then you have a retiree who's on a fixed income who can't keep up with with benefit costs well then you you transition into Medicaid or Medicare whatever is going to be available to them going forward I, I understand your point um, and there are some employees that are retiring when they're 45 you can be a police officer be on the force for 20 years and and retire and, and get you're going to get lifetime health benefits uh, so these are all and things that not only do towns have to look at but school districts have to look at there's a breaking point that we're rapidly approaching and I don't know how the system adjusts itself and fixes itself and right sides itself it would seem to me that you know maybe towns should look at buying out employees of these benefits going forward by Paying a lump sum and maybe limiting their exposure going forward somehow. Like Early retirement from their retirement. Maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get it. I'll take it. Well, is with, but so help me understand the there's a there's a state retirement that you get. You know, I know for example, police officers after twenty putting in twenty years, they retire and they get X number of dollars, and then they also have, I believe, their their health benefits. Mm -hmm. is it okay. So I think the the part of my question was, is there a way for us to do anything with respect to the simple retirement benefit that is not associated with health care benefits? I think that's a state <coughs> question. Is it? Okay. That's what I was that's trying to figure out. That's a state retirement that's state. question. Okay. Okay. And um, I think if you, if you read the articles on it, they assumed the, the pension guys up in in Albany assumed a seven and a half or eight percent return on the fund for a zillion years and we know that that's not <laughs> happening right. so and and towns and schools have to fund the underfunded pension hit and where's that money going to come from it comes from me and you right so I don't know I, I would really like to see new Pauls try to start all over again somehow before we're forced to start all over again in a very bad way and, um, I'm not trying to be gloom and doom, but it, it's very quickly approaching that breaking point I'm talking about. So if we're going to do this consolidation, maybe we can think really far out the box and come up with something new so that everybody's treated fairly, but at the same time, it's, there's more of a balance in the system because right now there's no balance. Right, right. Is there is there potential for changing things for newer employees as they come in or I mean is that is that a way to that to would perhaps be that be a way of, of looking of forward. adjusting your back end liability so that each year it clicks down a little bit right. to a point where it goes down to zero yes but if contracts are coming up um, on, on many employees is it possible to make a change yeah I think so and I think what would be an interesting idea is you know and this is I know if this is a Democratic idea, Republican idea, I don't care anymore, okay? Maybe it's a good idea to pay people for their benefit each year so that the town is free from that continuing liability. You know, so if you have a, a retirement benefit, pay the benefit to the employee, they have to put it somewhere and save it for retirement. But now the town doesn't have to worry about Albany losing the money right. and then taxing the people again to restore the money. Because uh, the person becomes responsible for their own money. Yes. Like an IRA? Or like an IRA, okay. but what we take Albany and the federal government out of the process in a way and we control our own destiny moving forward. So that each budget year, you don't have any continuing contingent liability going forward. It's all paid for. The trick is getting there while you're still paying the retirees. That's right. Yeah. And, and so it's almost worth 
pay them out. It's almost worth buying them out of it if you can. But who would be willing to do that? I feel who like. would be? Yeah. If if you could show through you know a financial study what the relationship is between let's say the cost of those future benefits right. going forward yeah. and the cost of buying them out now it might be worth with cheap money to buy them out now and end your liability but wouldn't an individual look at that same right analysis and say no I'm way doing that. i just want my benefits <laughs> well but the, the, the flip side of that is their benefits may go away oh or yeah. be reduced substantially reduced right. so the reality is the employee has to look at that too and Albany cannot afford to pay all these benefits. Right. The reality is going to set in soon. And, uh, and it, it's probably more bird in hand versus two at the bush. Right. And it's like, okay, you'll give me $75,000. Well, if I stick around for another year, I might get $25,000 more. But then again, I might not even get that, you know. So, so it's just an idea. Other, yeah. Well, you think they're literally going to stop paying benefits? Yes. They're gonna they're gonna have to reduce the benefits. People are gonna get letters, and, and it's just gonna they, they don't have the money. They don't have it. I mean, I think the governor is now already. I, I think he started talking about chipping away at how overtime has been used to calculate people's benefits. Oh yeah, I mean that's so been abused he, for years. Yeah, and so I think he, you know, I mean, he's going step by step and yeah. I, you know I mean eventually the, the the I think governments are going to start trying to move t more toward a business model as it relates to employees and their expenses because it's 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 not sustainable I mean the the, the money tree is gone the, the, the tax base <coughs> continues to shrink right the money <laughs> went from the retirement fund to the boys on Wall Street who then lost a lot of money now the retirement fund is, is has less assets in it. So in order to raise more assets, they have to tax us somehow to put the money back in the accounts. So at a certain point in time, we're tapped out too as individuals. Right. So I'm thinking if we can take care of our own people at the local level, if we're using our own model, maybe we're one step ahead of whatever crash is coming for the rest of the people. That sounds like a very creative plan. So we should maybe explore that a little bit and see if that'll work. Maybe we have to get a couple of experts, yeah. financial experts, to tell us what our liability is now and discount it to a present value and see if it's worth paying off somehow. Do our employees, I guess they, do they have to be in a, in a state, I'm trying to think, do, is it is it possible for the town to create its own? We're going to have to check into that. It's a, it's a big I'm legal thinking question. If, you know, you get we have a labor lawyer. I'm going to ask that question too. Um, and he's on retainer. We can, it's, it's an unlimited questioning for a flat Perfect. fee. So we're going to ask him. Um, and I talked to Susan Zimmer <laughs> about that today. <laughs> use up the unlimited. I didn't His name is Bill, Bill Wallens. <laughs> Bill Wallens. Yeah. I'll call him and speak to him about that. It's just an idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something. I mean, I'm going to, to, to think about this a little bit. I, I'm, not, about I'm, I'm still not, you know, it's all based it's on the okay. premise that the state's going to stop paying right. benefits, and I'm not sure I'm, I'm there. Wall Street's doing pretty well. The state's, the state's to take coffers a little will be. Bit uh, more from Wall Street, though, Don. Yeah. They're yeah. not taking enough from them. You know? Yeah. And why, look, look at the school district. You know, you $52 million, right? Um, where we get 14 or 15 million from the state and we have to pay for the rest but the 14 or 15 million that we get from the state we're getting from ourselves because we've already given the state right. money yeah, it doesn't come state from New income tax no so we're really paying all of it right, right. the bottom line of course so every what, tax dollar is our every dollar. tax dollar we're not getting help from anybody no and why is that well because we're the only ones we're all contributing in so no matter what it's because always our money because the bottom line is that the, the, the state and the federal government just continues to use the taxpayer to pay. And that's it. Right. And that's not a Republican philosophy, you know? It's just that's the way it's going down. So how can we, you know, how can we as a town change that? We need to change it. Somebody needs to change it. And I, I think changing the whole model now might set a precedent for everybody else to change their models. 
No, but Don, think about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can develop an interesting uh, program for it. But it all ratchets down to, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it will impact the town government, but at the same time, it also impacts the people who pay the bills. Yes. You know, and, and, and you know, at, at, at some point, um, you know, we all are learning to do more with less. And, you know, I mean, one of the things that I found and heard a lot when, you know, I was campaigning was, you know, there are a lot of people, seniors in this community who've helped build this place for somebody like me to take advantage of. And, you know, I've, I had a lot of people tell me that if I could dump my house and get out of here, I would, because I can't afford to live here. Right. I'm, I'm being eaten alive in taxes, and my Social Security and my retirement is not keeping up with everything, and every time I turn, you know, so I mean, it's, it's it, it may be painful at first, but I think at, at, at the end of the day, it'll, it'll, it'll even things out for everybody, and it'll, it, hopefully it will allow people to continue to stay here. Um, and we just have to be serious about what the services are that we need and those that are needs and those that are wants and, and balance those to try and figure out how best to, to accomplish what we need to do as a government. Right. You know, I, I look at all these great benefits that we give to our employees and um, certainly our employees deserve benefits like most employees have benefits. and. Um, you know, I believe that everybody should have health care, and I think that's wonderful that they have great jobs in our village and town. Um, but I'm I'm looking at a lot of these taxpayers, and a lot of our neighbors here don't have health insurance, and they're the ones being the payers of all these people with all these great benefits and retirement accounts. And it just inside of me um, strikes a, a little bit of an off note that we can't even afford these workers. We can't even afford to live here and pay these bills, and I think I think it's very very important that we re-examine um, all of these benefits, retirement packages, and, and all these great things. And I'm I'm happy that New Post is a great place to work, but we need to be able to afford the people that work here. Well, there's always a trade-off too, and this was true with the school district for years between salary and your other benefits, because most municipal employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're paid. Um, they're paid at a scale, which um, I have to be careful here. But it's not a great. You're not making a fortune working for a municipality. So a lot of these people are single mothers who are getting paid a fair wage, but it's not the kind of wage where. Uh, you're going to have anything left over for extras. So kind of to compensate people for their service, they get a little bit of a kicker when it comes to benefits. And I think that's how it kind of plays off in municipal governments. Better, better benefit. A better benefit. If you look at the salary structure for most of the town employees, um, it's, it's pretty modest um, in terms of the rate of pay. Um, that's just my personal opinion from, mm -hmm. from, from looking. Well, I think and that's the, civil the service, right? That's a civil yes. service yeah. scale. Right. right. And the, the former supervisor made that point very clearly several times from the table that the private sector allowed her to have a better, better income. Right. So it's been well stated that government's not where you make your salary, that the, the benefits are pretty good. Yes, yeah. that's true. So I think it makes sense for us to take a look at what the benefits are compare them next to each other and and be able to you know make some assessments on you know and I think to add to that I think it's important to really negotiate those benefits as you would as a private employer mm -hmm. trying to squeeze every penny out of the system and you know I, I think that the, that the town could have been more creative maybe in the past in terms of how they funded health care and you know, each year it slips a little bit, and you're losing maybe two or three hundred dollars per person per month. It's a lot of money. Adds up. And not only that, you, <coughs> as as minor as it might seem, but not being on top of contracts when they expire to take advantage of 
changes in econ in, in economics right. because you know you, you have a contract that was done in 2007 2008 when perhaps you know things were level burst you know and because you're not doing anything right. with it you're still feeding that cow uh, because you haven't said okay let's stop and take a look at this so a realistic look yeah in so, our in our current government um, who is responsible for shopping for benefits and studying these benefits and contracts the town the so, so the supervisor it would be the supervisor and the town board right. it would start probably with somebody that's an employee of the town starting to examine alternatives mm -hmm. bring that information to the supervisor <coughs> supervisor evaluates the information and brings the information to the town board that's how it works. and that's something that she's looking at now okay. is new york new york i believe is a, is kind of like a hybrid when it comes to health insurance am i off the mark here it's you you, you can't just have a bazillion and one like if as a private individual, I couldn't just go out and get anybody to provide health insurance for me. I mean, there when I went looking, because I'm one of those who's retired, I go looking and it's like, oh, we can't sell in New York. Well, I think you you're know? right. They have to be, you have to be licensed in New York, and New York State Insurance Department would govern whether or not you can offer your products right. in New York State. You're right. right. There are regulations to control, you know, which. Certain companies have to have a certain rating to come into New York State and sell. If you don't have that rating, then maybe there's just a fly-by-night insurance company. They're in business for six months and they're right. gone. Right. So New York State wants to avoid that. So they do have a rating system. Well, looking at these, uh, looking at our t at the tasks, the union employees, non-union employees, retirement, health care. It would seem to me that that union employees contract benefits. That that could be a meeting or two. Yeah. I mean, just uh, just in and of itself, yeah. or three or four. But yeah. I guess you know, I I. It would seem seem to be logical to get all the information on the union contracts for our next meeting. Right. Be able to lay them next to each other, and begin the process. End it if we can in that meeting, but begin the process of of going after going after understanding that that aspect of it. Well, I current I currently have a copy not with me, but I do have a copy of the the current police officers contract which is up which you know Kevin right. so but I mean I don't know if you have a copy of it but I can you know I I do have that that I can bring whenever we set up our next okay. meeting if, if that's how we want to we can do that start and that perhaps that might be a first kickoff because it, it's probably one of the most expensive things that we have oh it is yeah so that might be we might want to go think, down that rabbit hole first I think too Talking to Bill Wallens, who's um, counsel on employment matters here in the town, we may be able to short circuit a lot of this done and have him give us a memo on how we would synthesize these contracts. So we'd have to get him the facts and then have him deal with the facts and see if he can give us a quick opinion on you know, how easy it would be to, to combine the CSEA retirement packages maybe with the retirement packages that some of these union contracts have he's I'm sure he has experience with that it might save us a lot of time so I'm going to ask him about that sure I don't think I'm overly enthusiastic about taking a look at a union contract for the first time trying to master it and make intelligent decisions in the course of the meeting have that sounds fun. like a daunting uh, <laughs> you just have riders you have 10 riders added to the original contract yeah. and wear a seat belt <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, in looking at this, I think it's going to be important that we evaluate the services that each municipality provides, how we provide them, and like Don said, is there um, overlap between employees and who's providing what, and where, if at all, could there be consolidation of positions and things of that nature as well. And I don't really see that outlined in what we've presented, but... I think that's going to be an important part of bringing these two together because I'm sure we would find things of that nature, especially in, you know, I mean, I can think of a couple of different places well, where. Yeah. 
I was disappointed that the study didn't kind of go one step further and make some recommendations. Yeah, I yeah, I kind of that found was that probably for well. political reasons. It's a, it's a political it's it's yeah. a it's a stink bomb. Right. It's a you know, but I I ultimately don't see there being tremendous benefit in consolidation if there isn't some right some increased efficiency in the delivery of services. Sure. Yeah, that that you know, and better management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our resources. at the same time, that could be perceived as us sitting here deciding people's futures, and I can understand why that would be politically undesirable. Sure. <laughs> right. I and mean, it's uh, by no means an easy task, but I think it's essential to what we're tested to do. Mm -hmm. The study could have recommended that it would it would be possible to save five to ten percent. For they could have thrown some percentage sure. out without identifying which departments or whatever, but. You know, it seems to me that that a five percent savings should be doable when you consolidate two entities. I would assume so. I would say five percent. And and you know the consolidation doesn't necessarily mean that it's all done in one fell swoop. Right. I mean things can be phased in over time as people and get ready to right, retire. And, 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 or right. Whatever. And you deal right. with you deal with things through attrition versus eliminating positions right. so that you you try to stagger things so that you know maybe it's right you, know, you stage, the top, stage right, it right, right, stage right at the top of my head let's say you know the two accounting departments come together and you know right. that's that's sure the first spot exactly. Exactly. right and then you know the next one might be you know if there are two buildings and grounds and that might be the next next way I mean um, it doesn't have to be okay we're merging and then okay you're gone and you all now, fall yeah, out you all fall out piece, it, it, right. it can be something that and and I think that's the way it should be and I I think it people don't go into government to become rich uh, it's my view people go into government to serve and they happen to be paid a little something because they're serving and I, and I and I think we owe people um, a smooth exit if it's required and we need to 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 be gentle in the way that we bring about this metamorphosis of, of, of the two governments if that is where we end up mm -hmm. going we need to be able to do it with some degree of compassion so that people don't feel like they're just being kicked to the curb because you know we just can't afford you anymore. Right. I think it's really a great idea I like the idea of staging it. You can identify and stage. Yeah. Well, but as as this is currently written and offered to us, it's not a. It's, it's not. not. Well, I think that's going to be something that me and Kevin have to bring back to the umbrella committee, and we'll have that added to our. Uh, if everyone agrees to that. Um, I I think it's it's one of the most important things we could do. Okay. Staging. Uh, just looking at, at yeah. is there overlap of services? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, is there? Right. And if there is, then you could figure out what the next step is. But the first thing is determining, is there overlap? Right. Do we have, you know, I mean, do we have people doing the same things that, you know, that are costing the, the taxpayers money? And in that process, look at retirement dates for people who are, who are getting close to that gate. Right. You know? And... You know, maybe perhaps that's the way we look at doing the staging. Yeah. Back into it. Saying this right. position should not be okay, refilled right. when, it's, when it becomes here's, vacant. Here's, you know, we got three people coming out of here who are about to, about to retire. Let's see how that can dovetail with mm -hmm. what we've got left for people who, you know what I mean? So. But you're right, Don. That's the $60 million question. There's got to be savings. Otherwise, well, it's not worth doing. Right. Well, I think that was, you know, uh, there, I watched on TV the presentation of the draft report from the consultants, and that was seemed to be the the emotion in the room. Well, that's what sure. we want. Right. Give us some savings, right. you know. Yeah. So that's I think I think if consolidation is going to be accepted by the community, and I think that's an open question right now. There has to be some some, some beef. Right. You know, there has to be some something there. See, because when I look at it too, I see that. Even non-financially, there are reasons to consolidate. For example, two master plans, two boards. I mean, two two different codes. You know, granted, downtown New Paltz zones a bit differently than you know far outside of New Paltz, but that can all be 
considered under one big plan. So I think, you know, there are those aspects where you know, having to go to two different governments doesn't really make sense. But I think in order to, because it's such a big process and because it will cost us money, as much as I, you know, might see other reasons to do it. Yeah. But you can also, at the same time, you can't, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around how you perhaps develop and create a budget and finances for consolidation when you don't have your head wrapped around what it is that exists and where duplication is, right. if it exists. Um, um, you know, it's it's. I'm still trying to. That's why finance committee. I'm sure will be waiting for our yeah. our report. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what most people do is they they make assumptions, and then based on on those assumptions, they start working their numbers. But because of the political fallout associated with the assumptions that you might make. If somebody's one of the committees going to have to make this, the right. assumption. Somebody's going right. to. Somebody's going to. Somebody have to do the dirty work, the heavy lifting. <laughs> and I, I happened to film the first meeting of the finance subcommittee, and their one of their main goals, that draft report came out saying that it would cost town residents slightly more in taxes under a consolidation. So I think their goal, what they talked about anyway, and it was on TV, was to bring that down to zero. So there would be no increase for town residents. So. If they were successful in doing that, and we could identify some duplications, which would provide additional savings, maybe it can go from being neutral to cost you the same to a little bit of a plus. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't see the backup on any of that. Did you? The yep. backup for their their determination that the town would be paying more. I didn't see any of the backup on that. I'd like to read that. Yeah, to see what what assumptions they made in coming up with that number. Um, yeah, there's a I, lot of variables there. Lots, lots, lots. And I think your biggest variable sits at, with what we do here. It's your human capital. Your your biggest variable is is to some degree your your human capital because it's the people that keep the government you know running, and that's that's where you're you know a lot of your expenses. The second biggest variable is how you would assess you know different properties and, and different uses and mm -hmm. you know how how do you fairly assess going forward right 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 and there's 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 a lot of work that needs to be done there too well I mean for a small example um, like lighting you know the dish like not just lighting throughout the village but you know paying for different districts I think that would you know, depending on how we split it up and who's paying for the full services versus who's paying for some of the services versus like who wants these services in the future, <coughs> um, this is all going to have an impact also on how uh, rates go up or down within the town. You know what I mean? If if let's say you're outside of the lighting district, then you know maybe that's a necessary thing <coughs> to have, and you know only people who benefit from it get to pay for it or. You know, I guess also if you're driving down those roads, maybe we should all pay for it. Yeah, so I guess <laughs> really interesting sub issues there. Yeah, but you're right. There's probably going to be a model that, uh, that comes out where you're going to have districts, where you're going to have essentially a group of people that will will solely benefit from that particular resource or asset, mm -hmm. and they'll be paying the bulk of it. Maybe some of it is paid for mm -hmm. on a community based <coughs> basis. Okay. But uh, it's it's going to have to be, and you're going to have you're going to have I think a different approach too to how some of the non-payers are going to start paying too, because the non-payers can't continue to non-pay um, and still get the benefit and 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 pass it on to the payers. The sure. payers are, are are tapped out so. Well. You know, so your 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 specific districts will allow you, I think, to, to tax the entities that aren't being taxed now. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting too to see how growth happens because then you could have people who say, "Well, I would really like to be a part of that service and have the ability to opt into it," um, 
which may, you know, for example, with sidewalks, may benefit with like a more walkable community overall and things of that nature. Oh, I'd love to see some sidewalks up 208. That'd be great. Wouldn't that be nice? It'd really be need that. Yeah. 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 208 should be walkable to yeah. the village. Yeah. Fantastic. Anything else? Well, I, I wanted to mention um, something about management. Um, I'm, I'm a little more familiar with um, goings on in the village because I watch it very closely. I live in the village and own and operate a business on Main Street. And sometimes um, some of our municipal workers, and I'm not going to say town, village, uh, that's not what I'm here for, um, could use better management and structure. And I think that in my opinion, if there was some type of a consolidation, there was a, a bigger group of people working on whatever they were working on, if they were planting grass that day or cleaning the park or whatever they're doing. <coughs> if, you have, if you have more, more people working, um, it seems to me that those people would need a stronger management system. You have a bigger company, you have a bigger manager, um, bigger manager better trained, uh, has management experience, uh, executive training, MBA, um, somebody who's used to multitasking and managing, you know, 150 plus adults. Um, and that is something that I, I personally think would be very effective um, in the village and in the town, that we would have somebody who was kind of the personnel person that was overseeing all the different arms and different entities of our um, our workers. Like a town or village manager. Or consoli it's consolidated town and village manager. Right. Okay, today all the guys are going to work on this and we could probably get projects done faster and more effectively um, with better planning and better management. And I think um, it would take less time to do things. I think there would be less wasted time. I, I do see workers wasting time sometimes. and. You know, I think that's the nature of people at work sometimes. And it's um, a mindset. It is. And, and unfortunately, um, when the boss is away, um, people don't always work as hard. And I, I think anybody who's had a business um, can see that. So I'd like to see some, some type of a, a, a bigger manager keeping an eye on the day-to-day -day activities mm -hmm. of our, our different groups of workers. I think a fiscal manager is also going to be important mm -hmm. going forward. You really need somebody with a, a high level of training running a yes a seventeen or eighteen million dollar budget yep mm -hmm. twenty million dollar budget yes. yeah you really do yeah. and that person has to be somebody that will survive each Politics. regime not an election cycle yeah it somebody that's not enough time it's it's a, it's a hired person or a hired person, person so. with maybe a contract that survives the political. Uh, changes. Right. Um, I've always said a city manager would be the, 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 the perfect kind of thing that you're talking about because mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the person that can say, look elected folks, I don't have to stand for election but I'm going to tell you what you need to be doing yeah. and here's where the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. and if you do this, we'll avoid this. If you don't do this, right. We're going to be up the creek. Mm -hmm. Except in the city of Newburgh, where the city manager flips over every time there's a new election cycle. I mean, every two well, years yeah. there's a new city manager. Because I, I don't like you anymore. Let's bring someone in who's... Well, perhaps the, the you know, and, and I don't know, is this an HR kind of thing? Perhaps if that is something that is recommended out of the HR committee, it could be. perhaps it is something, you know, our supervisor's term is two years. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the city manager's term, if that's something we chose, would be five years Could because be they would service. Out, yeah, because they they out they outlast the sure. four-year term of right. the town board and the supivisor by one year. So there's continuity. Continuity yeah. is so important. Okay, yeah. there's I continuity. Over, <coughs> the the, the lag to get caught up is sure. tremendous. Wasted time. I mean, that is the benefit I would say of having the village style of government to the town is that we have our chief fiscal officer you know that position is there throughout we've had the same you yeah, know that's important yeah and there is you have a highly skilled person focused right. on that as their full-time job yeah right. but there's benefit and to change sure in a city course. manager because 
you know, one of the things that I've, ex you know, that somebody who's lived in D.C., one of the things that you find is that members of Congress come and go, but the staffers just move around mm -hmm. and they consolidate the power and they right. end up running the place right. because you have the longevity and the institutional knowledge. And they tell those people, oh, you should be doing this and that and the other. And, you know, we don't have to stand for election, then you're gone. Mm -hmm. So there may be a need for, you know, every five years we look for a new city manager. And it was one of the things, and I think I may have looked at it with Nancy Cohen at one time. Um, you know, there's a city manager's association. These people have particular training as it relates to... <coughs> running and managing governments and resources and operations um, and silly enough as it was I thought maybe that's something I would do here <laughs> instead of run for office. Well, yeah the but, idea of like a master's in public administration yeah, someone with that type of degree I, right. I think it makes perfect sense to have someone like that running I'm, I'm sorry no, I was yeah. just, just going to throw out there someone has to pay for this job Yes. Well, okay. We're going yeah. to save a lot of okay. money so we'll have cool. <laughs> All right. I think you can save a lot of money yeah. I think there's tons of potential. I think we just have to find the thing that works best, you know? And People just, the, just the voucher system here in the town, how things get paid. Is it bad? Prehistoric. You know? <laughs> and and that, that needs to be automated so that it can happen more quickly so you don't have people handwriting vouchers mm -hmm. for payment for yoga. Yes. You know? I mean, so uh, there's there's all kinds of efficiencies that you can drive. Well, we I mean, can you imagine you can't even pay your bills online? We should be village. taking it the whole you thing digital. We, we don't have time for all this paper and old nonsense. We we well, need to get some smart young that's people. That's what your 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 manager or your chief financial mm -hmm. officer will bring to the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We have to have very efficient websites. We have to have digital communication yeah. uh, between residents and government, between the schools and the parents. Um, between between everybody I, I mean I don't know anybody who's not on email and I I do believe that there are some people out there that don't email and sure. I used to be one of them I so definitely know I, know I, ju I just want to say that somebody who can't should be able to walk into the village hall or into the town hall right, of course. and get a package or of into course. the school and get a package but but personally I am just inundated with paperwork constantly between the three kids and living in the village and the water bill I get seven different water bills it's such a joke and somebody has to fill it out and somebody has to deliver it to each door and stick it under the door it's well so I have an email address why why aren't right. they just sending it to me on the email oh well, we're getting there we're working on it but no, I'm not, I'm not no no no, right, right. no but really no I mean not. I've been saying the same thing I completely agree and then you have someone mm -hmm. to enter it all back in when you get back and you know I mean the process is long and truly outdated and, uh, I mean, you know we need to have it there for people who can't do it okay but I think for the rest of us who all can right. you know I mean just just the amount of money in paper is and they huge. have to use pink why why are we using pink when well, pink costs ten nice. times more than white I don't need pink yeah I like pink but I don't need it yeah it's to ease your pain when you read your bill yeah. That's what <laughs> but those are those savings you might spend more mm. in a good financial officer sure mm -hmm. and a good city manager right. mm -hmm. but you will realize the savings when they come in and they say, you guys have got to be crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. This 95% of what we do in here can be slashed because there's a more efficient way to do it and I'm gonna set it up and then boom, they pay for themselves. And, and, and maybe an efficient manager doesn't need to use overtime hours. I see a lot of overtime. And I, I personally am not a fan of overtime. I, I don't like it. I'm not saying it's not fair. I know it's in some of these big contracts. An efficient manager should not need to use overtime unless there's an emergency. If there's an emergency, you use overtime, you have, you have to get it done, someone's hurt, it's a fire, I mean, whatever it is, you do it. Sure. Okay? But, but this overtime thing, just to, just to stay at work or, or because I don't. I don't even know. I don't. I don't really want to criticize specific um, groups or, or government. Um, so I'm not going to give an example because of that. Because my example won't be that terrific. Well, we should look at overtime. Um, but I, but I'm, I'm really worried about overtime, and I think it's really a lot of extra money that we're spending that we don't need to spend. Sure. Well, take a look at that. See the, what we're paying. The, the thought to that also is kind of like the the thought of you know we don't pay you very very much, but your benefits are really really good. A lot of people 
have the mindset that, you know, overtime is part of salary. It's, for me, it's not. It's, it's one of those things that you happen to get every once in a while because they, they oh, yes. need you. It's a bonus, but it is not. Yeah, and it should not be considered part of your calculation <laughs> for your take-home pay or any or anything else. But in some instances, that's not the way that it is. And 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 perhaps there needs to be a broader overtime policy for the city, the, the town, the village, the merger, or whatever, so that it is not something that is just handed out at the whim of the immediate supervisor. It is it is something that there is a process for it and, and perhaps you're penalized if you overuse it because that means you're not doing what you suggested, being as a good a manager. manager. As a manager. You're not effectively good, managing good manager your resources. Manages their resources and right. gets everything done and it's time allotted. Correct. Every time should be used for emergencies. And our time is up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I felt like I was in the shrink's office. <laughs> uh, yeah. hours. Hours. <laughs> you can pay me at the door. <laughs> right. Um, so, I guess, we're, are, we, are we wrapping up? Is this where we're headed? We should try to identify what we're going to do for next meeting, what we're bringing in. Yeah, and we'll do that. Good. Okay. So mm -hmm. To do. To do list. I mean, honestly, if you um, were able to scan that contract, I don't know if you scan. Um, yeah, I can scan it and us. email it. We yeah. could all look at it before we even got here, yeah. and then we won't have to like absorb it when we were sure. here. We'd be ready to what? like talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll look at it. Yeah, it's probably like thirty pages long or something. I'll, I'll and it's the, the police officer's contract. But yeah, I'll, I can I can scan it and then PDF it and then right. email it. We'll put it up on the Google Docs. Oh yeah, we can just and check into our docs. Yeah, and I'm gonna toss up the CSEA. I have. I mean, I have with me the municipal, all the um, civil service positions that the village currently has. Is this all public information? I'm, I'm assuming so. I want, I'm going to go over with the necessary people, but I'm assuming that all the positions in C uh, the civil service are, I think the union contract, that's a public document. Um, and what was the other thing I wanted to put up? Oh, our policies. I guess that's, oh, is that going to be another thing we choose to examine? Well, the employee policies. I, I, I know you I had have, mentioned that. Yeah, I, I have a recommendation. Uh -huh. I, I've looked at our policies in our handbook. Yeah. And I've also gotten handbooks from four or five other towns. Yeah. The easiest way to do it is to go to the service, have the service come in, you sit down with the service, and they basically take your your employee policy and update it to try to recreate it is a huge task yeah if you don't have the experience mm -hmm. in dealing with towns before mm -hmm. and I, I i've seen three or four of the the policy manuals have the company's name on the inside and so i would suggest that that's the most efficient way to do it is you get the experts and you sit down with them you, you kind of compare you know, the two, the village and the town, and then you tell them what you want and have them generate the document. I mean, is that like a human human relations, human resources firm yes. that would do that? It, um, it, and b believe me, I'm Brian, it's extensive. I'm yeah. surprised you can't find that on the internet, like in existence, those policies. A lot of it is protected, is proprietary by the companies. Oh. So they don't even want you copying it um, and sending it out to somebody else to just to copy. Um, but. You know, I found anti-bullying, I mean, it's really comprehensive. I'm sure, right. I mean, you know, what I was thinking about for the village individually would be pulling more from the county-wide. But, uh, you know, I have to review more into what they want to do. But, when I mean, if we think, I mean, obviously what we have with just these three things is a huge task. So, you know, I don't know if we want to add that on down the road as we go and we can consider these three. I think that might be a better... I'll bring in a couple to our next meeting okay. and just circulate them around the table so you get an idea of how challenging that piece would be right. if you had to do it yourself. Yeah. Let me ask this question. Do we do we have or have we looked at or have we identified a, a, a town slash village whose government personnel policies and procedures we admire or would want to emulate so that we could look look at, at what what they're what they're doing to see you know say 
Rosendale is top notch with their personnel procedures and their benefits and so on. Perhaps we knock on their door and say, can we share this? Because we're looking at revamping stuff here. And if not them, I mean, I think we probably need to look at something that's similar in size. I mean, I don't think looking at Poughkeepsie would be beneficial no. to us because they have a much larger... I'd like to look money. at a town village scenario. So right. if there's one that exists. Socrates. 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 And see smart, how it worked in that that model, which is more specific to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Saugerties, and somewhere up in Plattsburgh, too, I think. Mm -hmm. stop? Would they be a good one? Dom? Are they a town in the village? I don't know. I, don't I know. thought it was just a village. Is it? Now, the Saugerties just merged their police force, Don, or did they merge the town and the village? They disbanded the village force. And but now they the have just The village still exists, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that well, so that's what we did. Lloyd. Lloyd. Got rid of our village police force yeah. and we just did the town. It's in the past two, three years. Oh, okay. Huh. Lloyd. Lloyd. Recently. Here. Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at the contracts. We're going to look at the benefits. You're going to get some input from the labor expert. Mm -hmm. And that'll keep us busy. Yeah, a lot. Do we have our next meeting? Have we decided is it the same time, date, every month? Or mm. is it, are we meeting twice a month? Or are we meeting... I think we, we have a, a joint meeting coming up, correct? I'm assuming, yeah, I believe so. so Next we'll week, discuss, we'll discuss, yeah, yeah. We'll discuss our meeting here with our respective boards, give them a little input, and then uh, maybe get some feedback from them, and then um, whoever wants to chair the next meeting can just pick a date, circulate it by email, everybody confirm, and okay. we'll all show up. Yeah, yeah. yeah let me just, uh, just chime in on that, on that thing. Uh, the original goal was to have the issue of consolidation in front of the voters for November. That was the goal. <laughs> I didn't pick the goal. Uh, <laughs> if, that, if that goal is to be achieved, this committee's work would have to be done certainly by Second. early October so we can make a recommendation to the committee of the whole, right. which would decide what to do for the voters. Right. So, so how many times do you think we need to meet? Well, I'm just saying it's June, yeah. and if we've got to be done... Well, let's pick a date now. You know? So do we meet once a month? Do we meet every two weeks? I mean, how many... You know, do yeah. we have to fit in six meetings? Can we go with four meetings? You, know, you want to you want to start every two weeks and see how that goes. Probably until we know what we're yeah, what, what we're I'm we're doing. You know. I mean, my issue with tonight in particular was that I just got switched to Historic Preservation Committee, and they do meet tonight at the same time. But um, well, my only conflict is the second Thursday Police Commission okay. and the last Monday which is public, public access. access. So that, I mean, Don and I share that. Oh, and I'm on public access too now. Welcome back. Is Monday <laughs> night good for you guys? Uh, as long as it's not the fourth Monday. Fridays. Fourth Monday is a problem for three of us. How about Monday the 2nd or the 9th of July? Because um, I guess the third Monday is going to be historic preservation, and the fourth Monday is Public access. access. Five, so we would need, I would need. I would only be able to do first and second Mondays. Okay. The well, second what? or the ninth. The ninth is fine for me. So and why don't we plan the 23rd on? Third is public access. The sixteenth is. But there's five five Mondays in July. Yeah. The thirtieth. Right. It'll be the ninth and the thirtieth. Ninth and thirtieth. Yeah. The second. There's, a, there's the second. There's the ninth, and there's the thirtieth. Yeah. So you want to do the ninth and thirtieth? Yeah, I think the second is that short with the, there's a federal holiday in the middle of the week, so oh, people right, will be taking, yeah. Yeah. going away and stuff. It might be easier to keep it to the night. Okay, so the 9th and 30th. 30th. Yep. 7 o'clock? Yep. Sounds good. Do you have a location? Right here. I'll confirm that. If, if there is, we'll move to the back, but I'll, I'll check on that, all right? And I'll let you know. Okay. So, so it's either here or the community center? center? Yeah. Anything so else? Going to be here on the night. Um, unless you hear otherwise. So, as far as you reporting out to your your boards, uh, there's a summary of the meeting, but also we'd like to put that additional item on our uh, on our charge about looking for yeah. duplication. Yeah, I'll bring I'll bring that up. Because nice if we do it and the boards don't want it, we will have wasted our time. Yes. But we want it, so yes. let's tell them. Does everyone agree with that? Is that? Um, does anyone have a point? I agree with it. So we're on for the 9th and the 30th.
You know, that went pretty well. Move to close the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Delightful. Thank you.